Well, if we could just get the fullness of that, we'd never have to hear another sermon. But blessed are they who come to this channel for the passion of love, a time of praise, because his praise will make all things new. As we learn to praise him in all truth, we set ourselves free for truth always sets his own loose. And he is loosed in heaven what he shall loose upon earth. So I salute you and thank you for coming. Uh, I'm going to put on my love hat. I grew my own wig. It was long too. The Lord wants us to be let down our name, be part of the family of a lion, which is called his bride. He is the lion of Zion behind me in that photo, and he's roaring louder than ever before, and the seventh trumpeter angel has sounded first, because the first is last, the last is first. So the Lord is bringing you his priceless pearl of uh, priceless, <laughs> of great price. And he sends forth his treasure of excellence, his word of truth in this hour to raise up the stakes to, for the deliverance of man. Just as Jonah 3 foretold, God does relent on his word and change his mind. If the people of the earth will listen to that which was spoken and written in the word of God for the latter days, things will turn out, I promise you, so much different because the Lord's mercy endureth forever. There is only one promise in the word of God that is written that says this, and this shall be considered in the latter days. What is that? Him saying to earth, I shall return my terrifying anger and stop the fast rising great tribulation if you give me the desire of my heart that he spoke in Gethsemane, our oneness of the brotherhood of man arising with our love transcending all religion, for there truly is no religion aside from the religion of love, which does away with, it's not important what any of us have believed or thought. Our righteousness is as filthy rags, and so has all of our understanding. It's never been about what we do for him, but what he has done for us. He has given now his kingdom age covenant, saying, I will forgive your iniquity. I will never remember it. I will write my law on my law, on your hearts of love, and I will be your God, you will be my people. That was written for the kingdom age, and it actually says so in Jeremiah 31, 1, that God would give that covenant in the latter days. It has never been given until now. And now he says, and all shall know me from the least to the greatest, Jeremiah 31, 35, because it is true that he was talking to all mankind. That is the blessing he sends. He's not a respecter of men. It rains on the just and unjust. And he says, and all shall know me, all of mankind, from the least to the greatest. For his word straight out says, I am the Lord of all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27. So come out for the treasure of his excellence. That, that comes forth and uh, praise God that uh, he is the excellence of that treasure and priceless is our Lord of love. So it came to pass that uh, the Holy Spirit that day as Christ walked away from an earthly throne and that's what he did and he, he shook the dust right off of his sandals. And uh, he didn't have a big confrontation about it. And the people would say in a time to come, 
The Lord God Almighty has filled us unto overflowing our hearts with his fire of his passion, and he has set the lamps of his most magnificent beneficence upon our right hands and on our left, so that no part of us could ever be without love whom he is. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten love, so whosoever would love should not perish, but have everlasting life. For those who love are born of God and know God, because God is love, 1 John 4, 7. So praise the Lord evermore that his overflowing, endless, unconditional love shines on our right hands, so that no part of our being could ever be without his light of the ocean of his adoration. And his most abundant might shines also upon our hearts, so that no part of our beings could ever possibly be without his everlasting power of forgiveness that is totally forgiving. The word of God says, all sin shall be forgiven man, aside from the unforgivable sin, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, letting our love life go out. So let it stir it up, let it not be a, a noun, waxed coal, not moving, for love is not love unless it's given away. So let it become a verb again, like when we were little children. In regards to born again, that's why Christ always said that you must be as little children with your love moving as a, 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 a verb. Otherwise, if it is not moving, it is dead, because love only wants to give itself away. So it's the time of the water walking faith that rolled in like a great tsunami of blessedness for our majesty and majesties who always stood in the glory of Jehovah Nisi, who was his pilot light. And the banner of love over one and all of us was he, is he, shall he always be, he changes not. So it came about that uh, nor would anyone within that enormous crowd that Jesus had just left ever be able to even discover that Jesus was not in their midst until he was already gone for over a half hour. It, it, it ended abruptly and they never did have the chance to uh, fully try to enthrone him like they would have liked. And the close by mountain that he departed for was the very same one where he would be delivering a recap of one of his most famous sermons that he had just given to a multitude. But before the Lord left, he told his people to linger for a few more hours thereabouts before getting into the ship uh, and sailing across uh, the lake to Bethesda, closer towards Jerusalem. And then that teacher of teachers assured his pumped up people that he would soon be catching up with them because he had time for prayer and it, it, he wanted to finish that for a short time. Now it came to pass that when the 12th hour neared, the apostle ship was in the midst of the sea, being tossed about wildly by great waves since the wind was most terrible to to behold. Unfortunately, uh, they were caught up within those troubled water, waters as huge breezes of doom unexpectedly struck them from out of nowhere. Boy, had they had an action-packed day, I'm telling you. And so it came about as they began rowing faster and faster because they were trying to bring st some stability to the craft. Uh, uh, before they would go down. So once realizing that they were losing out of, uh, losing control, they took to trying to row. And they worked hard. And for those beginner apostles, they refused to be victims of those wicked waves. So they were taking authority there of over because they knew that Christ is always shall be the overcomer and o of all overcomers and they were walking as his brethren. And so they disregarded that uh, things seemed pretty crazy and most menacing, and they tried to keep that faith, to keep away such great fright. 
uh, but uh, try as they might glo gloom came forth unto them anyway as a nightmare and a spirit of heaviness swept in really fast and those students of Christ's gospel of love they sensed that this blistery gale of no good desired unspeakable things for anyone daring to go with its ugly flow so they did not stop trying they they were rolling like mad and it was a real frightening time when depression immediately became uh, the painting that the Sea of Galilee was painting for them. And it was an awful picture of hopelessness. Uh, and it was painted quickly into their thoughts by some dreary feelings and dark fears. And all of a sudden, at one point, they all were almost faithless, almost. And then without any warning, the winds crashed around them and they suddenly arose like some bucking bulls as the gusty wind began resounding like some sick screaming hawks. It was uh, being tossed to and fro, and it was a shock to end all other shocks. But not too off, far off, in the midst of the foggy darkness, they suddenly unexpectedly noticed the peaking light of the moon was reflecting off something that was really misty. It was the God Shekinah glory was in the air and most radiant was it and it was only a couple hundred cubits from off their bouncing bow bow it was therefore a nervous time during that second watch of the night and a most anxious moment when those disturbed fishers of men even began praying harder than they were rowing and they were sweating and breathing hard it was also a most incredible hour of much incoming hope for as that reflective misty light slowly neared amidst a beautiful haze glorious to behold uh, the surrounding perilous waters then suddenly seemed to be crashing less and less against the side of their endangered boat and even the haughtiness of that prideful wind began dying down simultaneously as they grew closer to the most magnificent light and it was of christ's splendor in the not too distant future and the waiting, beckoning, calling each one of them by name. T'was therefore the welcome period when those followers of the Lord, they didn't have any doubt in that moment. Their faith came back like a flood into them. And they had no doubt that their Almighty was then answering all of their impassioned, distressed cries and that only his peace alone could surpass their understanding and their minds were being blown how could he get out here in the middle of this this uh, the storm but they didn't fully yet realize that he has his way in the storm and the biggest tsunami waves ever uh, imagined are but as dust under his feet like the clouds so it came to pass that all of a sudden it was like they were in the middle of a a hurricane where there is an eye and peacefulness uh, because the clouds then above them abruptly parted swiftly revealing undisturbed moon, moonbeam which quickly began caressing the mellowing waves below so it came about with some great shock and awe uh, snuck up on those 12 uh, sheep <laughs> and boy what a day and they all had one prayer that they could be more like the lion of zion they wanted to arise with means to let down their hair unto his glory as they exalted him and so as they surprisedly looked towards that nearing figure who was our carpenter of the ages standing most tall and all of creation and all of them everything before him would be as nails he had the hammer that would change things, and he knew how to bring it down uh, by supernatural miracle and by his word, a flame with passion overflowing. So it came about that they unexpectedly, uh, within a moment of a moment, suddenly they beheld their supernatural good shepherd over all the flock, uh, as he said in John 10, 15, always the Messiah of all mankind. And he was their shepherd of the ages, who was steadily approaching them from the east. 
But those troubled apostles, they knew, knew him not exactly at first. Uh, for the image of Christ was obscured a bit, a bit since he was surrounded mightily by the visible glory of God. And neither was it clear unto those wor worried uh, twelve that his, this foggy radiance coming close unto them covered him like a soft glowing mantle that held a paranormal glow. But all they knew it was it was deliverance, and they figured whether it be angel or whatever God was doing, they were going to receive. They had open hands to receive His love and His His mercy. So uh, for a moment they were pretty freaked out, to say the, the least. And it was natural for them to look upon Christ at first as if He was some kind of nearing scary ghost. Uh, therefore, they greatly feared that uh, this uh, figure approaching might haunt their souls, spook their spirits, or even cause their hearts to expo explode with some other kind of unleashed terror uh, if it was not of God. But they wanted to believe it was of God, and they still weren't sure. They were scratching their heads how little faith they had. Furthermore, even those grief-stricken students of our Master of all uh, had just seen him making something out of nothing as with the multiplication of the, the loaves and fishes. And they had just seen that miracle and his stupendous miracle of duplication, but still they didn't understand some of the deeper things of God's Holy Spirit. So uh, they were still unlearned about much. And they didn't somehow be able, at that point, they weren't able to connect our Lord's word about our dove of doves to that incoming fog-like glory, the resplendence of his honor that was coming forth uh, for a newness of day as he flashed his most radiant smile that would be more blinding than the, the, the heavens. And such was going before our Lord like a well-lit uh, well path under his sandaled feet. So it was therefore an embarrassing time when they would soon be feeling pretty darn foolish uh, once Christ was a little closer. After all, just days earlier, that redeeming Messiah had taught them well about the Holy Ghost, telling them that just as it was uh, when they were suckled as babes uh, and comforted by their mothers, so too would it also be again when God's Spirit would nurture them with his heart warming, overflowing light of love's brightest light that would come forth, and the darkness could never comprehend that. And nor did the, those uh, nervous twelve, nor did they relate uh, the mystery nearing uh, as the presence of flame with glory to that recent teaching. They didn't connect it. But uh, their lessons were going to be literal that day, and man, they would have skewed smiles painted across their faces uh, and so it was racing to that moment and Christ's own only for that moment only knew that they were using their earthly eyes as they looked upon that approaching aura of magnificent splendor which was then covering the rock of the ages like some type of holy rolling moss growing on a supernatural stone the stone that the builders had rejected, our carpenter of the ages. But just as they joined their fathers in the field when they grew up, the Lord had also stressed unto them, uh, not much time back, that they would be able to learn to abide under the Spirit's illum brightest illumination as he manifested himself unto them in many diverse ways. Therefore, moreover, Christ had gone on to explain unto them earlier that they should always be confident with that his truths would help to guide their steps towards that holy giver of the Lord's brightest light of love who endures evermore. So it was truly a time of celebration. And man, when Christ came forth and he was just about to speak, I'm telling you, he had mountain-moving faith and the trajectory of his word aflame in the spirit, bringing forth the glory of the heavens for earth. It held the power of a, a, a sunbeam 
and the gentle caressing nature of the fluttering wings of the Holy Spirit come to bring blessedness unto all who could receive it. Don't miss what's coming. Man, I don't even believe it.